Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Paint Party Livestream. I'm so glad you joined me this evening. This is my journey learning to paint. So if you've been around before, you know how it is. A couple of years ago, I started teaching myself to paint on YouTube and I've been doing these live streams for about the last year and a half. This is episode 84 of the live stream. It's really laid back and I'm just going through the process I am kind of going through as I learn to paint and refine my skills and I'm bringing you along. So you can contribute to the conversation if you'd like anywhere where you're watching in the comments. I enjoy interacting with you throughout the live stream so feel free to ask questions or chime in and give your thoughts as we go through the live stream. All right, I do need to say a very big apology to those of you who are regulars. Last week I kind of screwed something up with the posting to YouTube. I wasn't sure what happened, but I, I think I put a wrong date in or something and it didn't stream to YouTube. So it only went out on, um, I think, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, which I know most of you aren't connected with me. So that's a big, huge boo-boo on my part. And I promise to try to never do that again. Um, so everything should be good this evening. So glad to have you. All right, let's jump in. I'm going to switch you over to this camera and then I'm going to put this camera over my shoulder here on the canvas and we'll talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing this week. First though, I want to show you what we did last week, especially if you weren't able to be with us because of my mistake or any other reason. Um, I started doing doing a painting which is the largest painting that I've ever done. This is a painting about two by three feet ish. Um, so it is the largest painting I've ever attempted and it is it is a painting of Mont Saint Michel in northern France. This is an abbey on the top of an island that is only accessible when the tide goes out. Um, in the northern part of France. It has a storied history. If you're interested in history, you should definitely check out the documentary on Amazon video about Mont Saint-Michel because I think you would really enjoy it. Uh, I said Saint. Mont Saint-Michel. My French is not great, uh, meaning it's not there at all. But we're going to continue that painting because it is such a large painting, but I want to show you what I have done in the last week or so. So this is where the painting is right now. Um, I will post the progress photos once I get the painting done on Instagram so you can kind of see how it started out. Or if you're interested in that, you can go back to last week's, um, no, you can't go back to last week's live stream because it didn't stream to YouTube. But you could check this out um, on Instagram. But I am really happy with how it's coming together. I am now at the stage where I am doing some of the detail work. So I started really um, with just a value study. We did it kind of all in shades of brown, kind of a sepia type um, painting, and then went in and started adding some of the color. So that's where we are right now, building out the layers, building out the detail. So you'll be able to see me kind of do more detail work. Usually on the live stream, we're just starting the painting and you don't really get to see my process doing detail work. So this week you'll get to see some of that. So this is where we are and where we're going. Let me put up the um, reference photos so you can see what I am looking at and then we'll continue doing some of this um, detail work. Alrighty, let's jump in and I'll jump over to this camera just so it's a little more straight on. We can chat here. Um, oh, hi, Lola. So good to see you. Yeah, I really apologize. Once we got through the live stream, I was wondering why nobody was showing up or very few people, just a few people on LinkedIn and Facebook. And then I realized that I had really messed up on YouTube. So I apologize for that. Um, sincerely, I did miss you. And, uh, and so glad to have you back on the live stream. I don't think you've missed any or very many of them, so that may have been the first one you missed and it was my fault. But, um, all right. Let's see, where are, there's my 
All right, on the reference photo there on the right-hand side of your screen, I have Mont Saint-Michel on the top. That's the reference I'm using for the detail. In the center, I have a black and white version because I was using that for the value study and I'm still using it as I go just to make sure my values don't get too skewed. And then on the bottom, I have another picture, a similar, but it's just zoomed out a little bit. I wanted to paint this kind of center on, so I wanted it set like the top photo, but I wanted some of the the beach, uh, the tide was out when I was there, so I wanted that in the picture. So you'll notice my painting, I've kind of combined elements of both the top and the bottom photo as I'm painting. So we will um, continue that work, but that's what we'll be working off, off of. All right, let me flip this around, set this up. That way you can see, I may have to turn this around a little bit just so you can see the whole canvas all right I think you can see the whole canvas here yeah that's probably about as close as I can get you with this large canvas it's a little harder all right here we go, back to the canvas view. All right, so you can see what I have done. I'm curious if anybody in the audience has been to Mont Saint-Michel. If you've been to Mont Saint-Michel, let me know. I would love to know if you have been there and what your experience was like. It's an amazing, amazing building with so much history. All right, now we need to decide really to dive in. And I think to this, uh, I've done about three, maybe four, um, maybe four versions, not versions, uh, sessions on this painting. So yeah, I've, I've done a significant amount of fleshing this out, but I'm starting to now really come in and hone in, especially the structure of the buildings. I wanted to make sure I basically had the buildings kind of set in the right place. The I'm still kind of defining the wall down here. You'll notice there's not a lot of detail right here. I did this detail, the detail that's there last night. I did a little more detail up here and here but we'll keep kind of honing these kind of um, honing these uh, shapes. Um, the most detailed, I think, is up here and then over here where this hotel, or I guess it's a hotel, is. Um, and so those are starting to really give us an idea of what this will look like when it's done. But as I kind of carve out these different buildings, I'm trying to determine how much is the right level of detail for this painting. So that's kind of what I am focused on this week. All right, let's jump in. I want to, I think, first start with another layer of the sky. So I have started to put multiple layers which I think is good because it requires it basically for this this type of painting um, requires multiple layers but it's also good for the process because the um, because it gives us kind of layers then of the or it gives us more texture on the canvas. And in this case where I'm painting a lot of similar tone buildings, more layers gives us different under layers that, that show through at different places. So you get naturally a little better texture and feel for your the stone. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my thought process as I am doing this. So. Let's go here. What I'm going to do now, I think, is go to the sky 
and I've over when I was kind of painting the underpainting, I overpainted some of this. So the the buildings actually end right there. So I want to take this out into the sky and then some of this, I mean, this is just trees, which they aren't all there, but um, I'm happy with how this is laying out composition wise. It probably should be a little bit further out this direction, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, maybe I can bring this out further. Yeah, I'll, I'll think about that. I may do that. I may bring this out here so that we have the building come out to the edge here and the kind of how it is framed up above. Because this is positioned correct. The abbey is positioned correctly. We have kind of a building block here, building block here, and then there's a bu these buildings here, but then there's kind of a bunch of rooftops here. And so this actually sits further out here, but I don't know that it's necessary to put all those buildings, but I do think it might look better if this came out like it does on this other side. So just kind of talking my way through this. Hey, Anthony, thanks so much for popping in. I think of you often when I think that I, of places I want to, um, that I want to visit and trips I want to take. I am often thinking of you, sir. Okay. Now we're going to take this and we're going to take some I'm going to take some uh, medium and mix it in some of this texture medium because we're starting to get to the layers where the texture medium will be good. I want that there. Definitely thickens up the, the paint. So we'll go put in some sky. My goal with this painting is to actually, oh, this is hard with my camera in the way, but my goal with this painting is to um I'm just painting over this cuz I think I'm going to extend this out a little bit. My goal is to paint or to uh frame this painting and actually hang it in my own home. So all right, I don't know if you can see that but the the uh, brush strokes with that little bit of medium are really adding some nice texture to this. So I'm adding, as we go up away from the, away from the horizon. Hello, sir. How are you? I hope school is going well and you are getting ready to enjoy your Thanksgiving break. So good to always have you pop in to the live stream. So glad you are here. Remember that as we go up away from the away from the horizon, we darken a little bit the sky because there's less there is less um, atmosphere for the light to go through so the the sky looks darker the higher away from the horizon it goes
there is a dr fairly dramatic line there. So I want to kind of blend. Some of that will look like will look like cloud, you know, clouds in the sky, but we don't want just a line that shows we came across there, but we do want it lighter down here. Okay. And we'll go over here. We're going to have to repaint the position of that, I think. I mean, it's correctly positioned, but we're going to have to carve that in. All right. Again, the more detail we have, the better it is. So, or the more, not detail, the more texture. That way, the goal is that when people see the painting at a distance, it draws them in and they're excited about the painting. But then when they get up close and see the texture of the painting, it's even more interesting and more exciting for them. That's the goal. That's what we're trying to accomplish. That makes sense. And so, mix in some of this. Actually, we want to go a little bit lighter, or maybe a lot lighter. So we want to come down here. Yeah, you start to really have these interesting textures and variations of color that show through. So that's the goal. It's drying really quick, which is wonderful. All right, I'm really liking this what's happening with the sky. All right, so let's step back. Welcome, welcome also to those of you that have joined in the last several minutes. Oh, and I realized I didn't do my whole routine with my apron. I really need to have that on because I don't want to wear my paint home. Well, I'm already home, but I don't want to wear my paint on my clothes. So, all right, let's move this there. You can see. And I, I'm liking more and more this. I may lighten it still yet, the beach, but I'm liking the contrast of kind of this really azure blue, kind of cobalt blue, and then this grayish purple blue down below with the you know where the sand has the water has receded off the sand in the reference photos this is not as much contrast there's not as much blue tones but i like the blue tones in there um so i exaggerated that just a tad just a tad just a tad so all right we'll let the sky continue to um, dry. Let me go in here and just take a look at this without the light. Okay. Yeah, I think this is doing what I want to do. It looks good. Looks good. Because this was pretty much a cloudless day. I mean, there were some very high light clouds, 
but I'm not going to do any of that detail. Now, I think what I want to do is go and paint in, once that sets up, I'll have to wait a little bit, um, paint in the, the uh, wall there and start bringing those buildings and put at least the fundamental shapes of those rooftops in. That way, all of the compositional pieces of the painting will be correct and will be in their correct place. So we'll give that just a minute to dry and set up. In the meantime, I think what I want to do is hmm. Yeah, I think I just want to start some of this, the details. So what we'll do, we've been mixing some burnt umber, some raw umber, these are all my kind of uh, stone colors with white and with, woo, that's a lot of didn't intend to do that. Uh, you can see my burnt sienna, my raw umber. Let's do some raw sienna. And then some yellow ochre. So we kind of have all those colors there. And then white. The final mixing color is ultramarine blue which gives us kind of our dark it darkens it or cools it down good question anthony um the three photos are the top photo is what the is the frame of the of the painting that i wanted to capture so meaning on my painting, I wanted Mont Saint-Michel centered like it is in the top image. The middle painting is a black and white, obviously, and that's for, I started this last week, and that was to do a value study. So I painted the whole thing in kind of shades of brown and kind of a, so it looked kind of sepia. And then I started adding the colors and the variations on top of it. So I got all of my lights and shadows worked in in just brown before I de dealt with any of these colors. And so then I started adding the color. And that's what I used the middle, paint, middle picture for. And then the bottom picture is because I wanted some of this, I wanted the um, beach where the water, because this abbey is only accessible when the tide goes out and so i wanted that beach in front of us because compositionally it draws this kind of drier area where the water has receded draws our eye in and then up to what will be the pinnacle of mont saint michel um, with saint michael up there so the the viewer's eye is drawn in from the composition so i wanted this and it is not, I framed the, when I took the photo of the top photo, I was closer than the bottom photo. And so I did not have the beach in front of me. So hope that makes sense. But yeah, I wanted the beach because it also, I think, makes you feel when you're looking at it, the magnitude of the size of this beautiful accomplishment, this, this building that was built over thousands, well, a couple thousand years onto this top of this uh, edifice. So that is, the, that is the reason why there are three photos. So yeah, all right. Good question, thank you. 
All right, let's go in. What I'm going to do here, there right here is, and this is, there's kind of sh some shadow and light. There is kind of a cream colored house facade right there. And there's a little house behind it in the trees. And then there's another cream kind of building there. Um, I think that is actually the base wall that goes around the, the first wall that goes around the, the fort there because we see it, the top of it, through the trees there. And then we see it glance down here to kind of a, a turret or an outlook over here. So let's kind of see if we can put some of those things in place. I'm going to take a little yellow ochre. I'm going to mix it with a little white because it's facing the sun. Um, we're going to do that. And I am just going to put it in here. So there, and then it's about there. So this is, there's just a little suggestion of a building, little tiny. This is fairly detailed. Then to do the shadow side, I take a little raw sienna or raw umber. I mix in the same with the same sunny side. I just put a little blue and a little brown in. And so you can see on my palette, this is the light side and this is the shadow side. So we'll mix that. And I don't need a whole lot. The blue cools it down and the brown obviously changes the chroma so it's shadow and when you put the two side by side you can tell oh that's in the shadow so we're gonna come over here and I'm gonna draw the shadow side of the house I may have to darken that And there's kind of a, there's not a whole lot of detail, but I'm going to do that like a little bit of a little bit of a roof line. And a lot of this is, especially this type of thing, I usually do, um, landscapes most of my paintings those of you who watch a lot or do a lot of landscapes right and this is much different buildings with straight edges and light and dark with mild variations really is a challenge but I do also think it's just when it's like even I can already see where the painting's going and it is uh yeah, it is. I'm happy with where it's going. So I just need to practice some of this because I haven't done I haven't done this type of work much. So here's a we need to do and right below that house. This may be a little boring for y'all actually. I wonder if I can zoom. Oh, I can zoom in. I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see the detail I'm doing. Just remind me to zoom back out if I move out of frame because I kind of tend to forget the camera. There you can see better kind of what exactly I'm working on. And the level of lack of a lack of um, detail that there is. That's what's always amazing to me, like how little or how few brush strokes you actually need in order to create kind of a, a feeling of detail that's not actually there. All right, so I'm taking a much darker 
Hey there, Bob G. Thank you, thank you. Please tell Annette hello. I miss her and I hope she is well. All right, remember, oh, you can't see. Okay, we're gonna take this a little bit off. Sorry for the motion sickness. Um, because we're so zoomed in. So I am going to paint a little bit off the off the cliff here because I'm moving everything over a little bit. So at the edge of, if you look at the reference photo, that little house there that's, I'm trying, I can't really point to your example, but it's there and there's a little kind of tree above it and then the base of the abbey itself, um, there's a roof line that comes out. And so I'm putting that roof line, again, detail, and then I'm moving, because we're moving everything out a little bit. So this comes down there. And then there are some The, the houses are all kind of built on top of each other. So, or like one next to next to next. There, this is a town at the base of the mountain. Um, Mont Saint-Michel is a, there is a town there, but it's very much kind of a 1500s, 1600s town. Um, cobblestones you walk through, there's no traffic, like you can't take cars in there. It very much reminds me of a few watched um the um hogwarts not hogwarts but uh diagon alley in harry potter that's what it reminds me of if you watch those it really makes me think of diagon alley where all these little hidden pathways and such Okay, we're going to go down here. Then I'm going to, I'm working kind of backwards, light this up again. I'm just basically working one building to another. And let's see. In here, this comes there. Right below that is a another rooftop that is more in the sunlight. But it actually sits, I think it sits down like here across like this we just keep adjusting our adjusting things and this comes down here a little bit and then I'll zoom back out so you can see kind of how that fits in as we keep going so Put a little front of this house. We'll just keep, we'll just bring it out there. Then there is um, also up here, there is kind of a Oh, I got that too red. Well, we'll do this work then. So, um, 
gonna do that. And then there is another um, kind of yellowish. Well, where I was saying earlier the wall is, we have way too much yellow in here, so I'm trying to lighten it up. Up in here now, in the trees, there is, across from here, there's kind of a, I think it's the wall. of the city. And over in here is kind of where some of this comes in. We'll refine this. I'm just kind of putting markers to help me remember where, because I think this wall comes kind of across here, and then there's a rooftop there and some trees and such, so there's kind of where the wall comes, I think, right there. And we'll just do more detail. Oh, you can't see, sorry. Let's go zoom out a little bit. So what I was saying is the wall, I think, is here. And then it comes over here. And then the abbey is above here. And there's that building there with the gray kind of roof. And it's sitting kind of on the wall, the different levels of the wall, I believe. So we're going to go and do this kind of, I don't know, we'll, we'll create some detail there for that building because I don't know how far it goes over. Um, but again, I'm doing some kind of helping myself stay centered. You can see why this kind of work takes quite some time. Because it's just going back and adjusting and adjusting some more and adjusting some more. But we do have a roof line, so like right in there. Kind of. So we'll adjust that. I'm just putting the basic blocks in and then I'll adjust it for detail later. But just by putting contrast of light and dark, you already see a building in there. And it's like, oh, OK. You don't necessarily have to have lots and lots of contrast. OK, we're starting to get dry out here. So I'll zoom all the way out. And what I want to do is I worked up in here. Now, before I let this go, I want to kind of figure that out. So I'm going to take some more. I don't want to walk away from it before I've done what I needed to do there. So take some more dark paint up here. And I want to.
of playing a game of carving out kind of pieces and shapes. So I want to take this I'm taking some kind of that cream yellow we're gonna come over here and do some more detail work so Those parts that are right, then I'm going to need some and I'm just going to draw this with the same color. We can come back in and put different colors there, but I want to get the shape against the sky kind of correct. Um, then out here is a, since I have this paint on, I'm going to put, there's kind of a, some sort of roof line there that kind of stands up like this. Now we're just really putting shapes in again, and we'll refine this as we go because that's just what we do, right? Okay. This is me just moving that um, castle out to the edge of the, let me, out to the edge of the canvas. So we're extending our And I'm just putting big block of shape in here. And then I'll be able to adjust it as we go. Or I'll be able to carve buildings out of that shape, hopefully. That's the plan, at least. That's the plan, Stan. Hope you all had a good week. We had excessive cold here and we got predicted 
two to four inches of snow that turned into about 18 to 20 inches. So, but today was close to probably 40, 45 degrees, so it's back relatively warm. The snow is nah, melting a little bit. The streets are clear. We do really good here with, they clear our streets really effectively and quickly, so doesn't impact life generally too badly. But I am definitely glad. That's one thing people, you know, when we get those dips where I think Thursday the high was 3 degrees Fahrenheit or something, and people say, how can you live in that type of environment, blah, blah, blah. And then I tell them, well, yes, but also, oops. You have then a break periodically. You have a break in the, that is where it's 45 or 50 degrees. And when we get the sun out, our, because we have dry air and low relative humidity, well then it's not bad at all. Anywho. That's more rant than you probably wanted or needed. Okay, so this building sits on top of, so this needs to come over basically, because it sits on top and then the two move the other out. Um, Okay. It definitely is different from Arkansas. That's what I always tell my friends there when they say, oh, 50, it's cold. Well, yes, their 50 is cold because they have the humidity. And the humidity, it, it makes the air feel like that cold that like goes into your bones. Granted, when it's three degrees, it's just cold, like whether it's dry or wet, humid, three degrees is three degrees. But I can comfortably sit out here. The other morning I was out on my patio and it was 36 degrees in the sun and I just had my robe on and I was perfectly fine and it was, and I was not uncomfortable at all. I was perfectly comfortable. And so, yeah, it really is a different environment. And that's what it's hard to explain to people where, you know, you just look at the temperature and it's like, oh, that is so cold. It's like, well, yes, but. Okay, I'm going to start putting in the structure of this. kind of turret tower thing and we'll just we'll work him in there how long did I live I lived in Arkansas for about eight years I went there from um, southern Wisconsin so I was used to winter in Wisconsin. Like, I, I mean, I wasn't moving here unknowing. Like, I knew exactly. I mean, before I even left, the first thing I did before I even left Arkansas was buy in the, I left in the summer and I went, I went online and bought a whole set of really strong outerwear. And, um, cause I knew like what I was getting into. And that also makes a difference. Like understanding how to dress for excessive cold and how to layer really helps to, uh, so it's not as 
not really, I mean, it can be miserable, but it's not as miserable as people may think just because it, you know, we, you, you figure out how to dress for it and then you, you don't spend a lot of time outside unless you have literally, I have, I think five coats in my closet and they range from jacket coat to intermediate coat to heavy coat to parka and literal parka and so once you you know if I'm going to be out hiking or shoveling for excessive amounts of time then parka you know is rated to like 20 20 below and so it it gets the job done All right, I'm just starting to kind of, I'm just using basic shadow and light to kind of give an idea of where this will sit. And we'll come, the, the wall will come across there and then we'll have this here. See how quickly we move. move something, move a tower out. That's one thing I love about painting because, and maybe my approach helps because I don't, I don't even try to be perfect. Um, because I always know exactly you know that I can adjust things as I go I can always paint over something and repaint it like this you you kind of feel like you made a not a big mistake but a happy accident as Bob Ross says you just kind of paint over it and then and the cool thing is every effort is improved because like I paint over things and have to redo it and it every time I redo it I get better so yeah there's that and then we're closer to the end like the Like the other side okay all right let's step back and take a look see how now this goes kind of consistent out and will I think I'll fill some of this in like so it comes more direct down like that but that way it's more because I do want to keep these open parts of the canvas open I I think it by painting it that way and leaving those open parts of the canvas especially when i frame it it will feel like you're just being sucked into kind of a an image or a a view of like you just came upon most saw michelle and it will feel like you're hopefully it will feel like you're there that's the goal okay so let's go in here and kind of start putting in some more, just more details. This is where it gets kind of monotonous, but I mean, in a way, I mean, it's like I said, it's good for me because it, it's hard for me because I, I want, in, not instant, but I want the results pretty quick and I want it to just... I want to be able to paint for two hours and then boom, there it is. But I recognize that this is doing it this way is really going to be is the result, you know, step by step, layer by layer, building by building. It's going to. It's 
it's going to work better. So we're going to come in there. We're just going to block in some of this. Again, these are all um, kind of buildings and they are roof lines, buildings, etc. But I want to give kind of sharp lines to what I started to carve out as the, the wall. We'll just give ourselves some room to work there. And this is really helpful because I started painting this turret and this, or I don't know what they're called, rampart kind of thing, and this rampart, and they were too close together, but they're actually, well, I was trying to stretch it, but I think by giving myself the actual length of the wall, this looks so much better as far as the, what is actually there. The wall is longer and it kind of curves around that direction, so... Um, it will look more true to the actual building. So, yep, that's the deal. I'm going to go back in and do some work on the wall, just block work. I'm going to just block in because Again, I want to establish some pretty strong lines that will guide me for the rest of the detail work that I have to do on the wall. So I'm just going to put like a block of color and a rough shape, but I want pretty solid lines there so that's kind of what I'm trying to do now is just can we do sharp line then come in and put the shadows I can reestablish the shadows you can see some of those popping through the paint because this yellow is very translucent. But again, more layers help us in the long run, so it doesn't make me sad. We'll just cover up. All of this that is there is going to make. it look more like stones and like a wall as opposed to just a block of color because we'll have different, you know, there's different reds and yellows and, I mean, shades of yellow and white and different variations shining through. So that's the thought process. If y'all care at all, what's going through my sad little head? Not sad head. My smart little head. Let me talk better about myself. Okay. I am paying attention a little bit to some of this as I put in the shape because I notice that there's some light reflecting at the bottom of the wall different than the top of the wall. So that helps. Oops, there's just a lot of blue 
I know better than to mix my white, but I get too I get too uh, impatient, and I put other other colors get mixed in with the white, and it's not good, not good at all. Okay, let's try to just kind of see if we can just suggest some shapes here. Oh yeah, look at that. All of a sudden, oh, there's a tower. Huh. Like, oh, that tower fits right there. It basically comes down. There's some trees that should come down right in there. So now that we move this over, it should be easier. And I should be able to go put some of the same. Well, we'll see. That works, sort of. Again, being really just kind of all many layers on top of each other make the suggest how the light is striking the the wall. You can start to, I mean, you can really start to see the wall and I haven't really even painted anything. So that's a good sign, in my opinion. We're going to mix some more because this is working. So we're going to come out here again and kind of the brightest spots out here are on these where the sun is really facing the And that's how we do it. Just start to carve in the shape. And again, it doesn't need a lot, a lot of suggested Just put contrast around it, and all of a sudden, there is shape. Okay. I feel better than this. Obviously, none of this coordinates necessarily, but it is... Uh, coming through and I feel much better about this shape on the end I think it's more true because it is more of a gradual extension out to the out to the end of the um, and notice on I am looking at the top photo for my reference for all of this part of the painting but notice the framing of the other two paintings. You actually see rooftops 
on top of these. So I'm actually further to the right when I took that photo. I was coming along, there's a big long road basically, a walking road that comes up to this side. This is where you enter the city, right in there. And there's a big road that comes up, an elevated road. So I was walking along this side when I took the bottom photos. And then when I got a little more towards this area, that's where I captured this. So, because there's actually around this corner behind this building are more buildings, but they aren't visible in this frame framing of the, of the town. So I just noticed that because I was like, oh, are there rooftops on top of that turret? or that um, kind of rampart, but it's just because it's framed differently. But I don't want to do that because I want to be as true to the top photo as possible. All right. Happy, happy, happy. This makes me happy. And yes, so let me, I am pretty thrilled with the color mixing I have on this side. I think it's more true to what I'm seeing. Um, and this is a lot more blue gray. It looks very shadowed. So I'm actually going to come in here and do some repainting of some of this to lighten this up. And uh, and just make it more cohesive with the whole wall, if that's okay with you all. I know it is, because you always have my back. I'm just messing with you. Okay. I'll have to tweak this a little bit because I had the brightest part on my brush. So we'll tone this down a little bit so we can put some because if we can get this wall even more so it like all works that would make me happy even if that's all we get done tonight if this is all pretty cohesive that would not make me unhappy at all And that's what you have to do is just kind of get, I realized, oh, the yellow, this um, raw umber and the white is the right tone for this part of the, it's the right tone for this part of the wall. And then when I mix that, and I think that's also going to be the same color that I need up here. So now that I know how to mix that, because again, it's sort of difficult to um, be mixing colors that are so similar. And to get them correct. Yeah, and it's more cohesive with this one out here, so makes me happy. Okay. We'll have to lighten this shadow probably, or maybe not. We'll have to see. Now, let me take 
little, just a little bit of this. There is uh, actually, I want to keep this in the reference photo. There's, it's kind of like white gray out here where the sand has been exposed by the. fleeing tide. So I want to see if I can mix a color and do a little bit at the base of this. Here at the base of this uh, wall to give sort of a suggestion of different colors in the sand because I think that will give us some really cool contrast Yeah, I like that actually. Bringing it all the way off the canvas or cuz it it feels like to me the water just went back whoosh, across there and out to sea. The sea is on the other side of Mosami Shell that direction. So I like it. I like it a lot. At least right now. We'll see how it dries. It's hard to know with uh, acrylics because they dry darker and then you have yeah you just never know but we will see how this there we go yeah i'm really digging this y'all that's kind of a Probably a wrong way to say. It's so cool to see it start to come together, and it's because I, you always have that point where you're like, oh, I don't know if this is gonna work, and then it's like, oh, there it is. Like, yes, yes. Now, let me come up here. Especially when it actually works and you're just like, what? It worked. Mix a little bit of this and now come in again and just establish these buildings again. It'll give us some benchmarks, or not benchmarks, but uh some landmarks. That's the word I was looking for, for how we build up this so there's kind of these uh, we may be building this a little I have to flesh this out a little bit because Of these there's right in there some definitely right there so we'll just put some again it's amazing how much by just putting some roofs and then scribbling a little bit all of a sudden Things start to pop out, some roof lines, some, I'll have to put some, uh, I think some f trees in there because those roof lines are actually, this should be down just 
this should have probably this building should have started here because it's kind of sitting on top of these roof lines so we're gonna have to kind of fake this a little bit but not too bad we'll do some let's see if we can put a little I'm pretty happy with the greenery I did a couple several like last week um, when I started putting the greener, I'm pretty happy with it. All I have to do is do a little bit of, we just want to tone it down so the green is organic and not jarring. That's the main thing. So we mix a little brown with it, a little red. Red will always cut the green so and that gives us see how that I don't know if you can see it on the palette but it gives us kind of this deep almost like an army green that is much less saturated so we'll come in here and the there's some greenery that comes down into here, I think. So we'll just put that in. And then I think we're going to do some, there is some greenery there, but I think we're going to do even more in between these buildings, just so it kind of looks correct. So we'll start come in here, and then we'll do some, but we need some right in here on that roof line. I don't want to lose all my, then I think we'll do, we'll actually do more than is there right up along these. in between these uh, roof lines here. So this isn't actually there, but we're making it work. Because these roof lines are there. You can tell this is a little bit more blue than I had. But then we go in and list. We'll do more. And I'll put some shadows. The key is to put really high contrast shadows under and around these trees so that you get some real difference. But we'll mix some yellow so we have kind of a yellow green. And then we start just putting in highlights and it's amazing how little whoops how little you have to do to give to make it look like there's something there
That might not be working for me. We'll see. Because I put a little white in there. That may not be the effect I want, but. Well, maybe. You know, it kind of works, doesn't it? I think we just keep mixing things up and put some more yellow in there. Then we'll probably have to go back and put more shadows in because we've taken some of those out with this. But don't want to overpaint. All right. So we have some pretty excessive greenery that's not there but I'm not unhappy with it I think it fits with the rest and it nobody unless they're looking at a picture of some Mont Saint Michel side by side they're not gonna know and maybe I mean it definitely there's trees behind these houses so it could be at that angle I'm plus I am the artist and this is artist prerogative, right? So, all right. I am liking it. I am liking it. We have a few minutes. I mean, we have several minutes. So I think what I want to do now is go back. I'm happy with this. I'm pretty happy with this as a framework to start to build some of this. I think I want to go back up in here. And I want to do some detail, a little more detail work with some of these colors that we refined down here so that there's cohesion because I think the brighter spots of this wall are kind of the same as down here. So we're going to take those same colors. Let's see, let me put that there let me actually step back because I've been doing a lot of detail work I'm going to step back take another photo and look at it before I just jump into painting again look at what I've done what do I like about this what don't I like um, Yeah, it's really coming together. I, I am going to be proud to have this hang on my wall, I think. Okay. All right, let me zoom you all in a little bit. I'm going to adjust this camera and zoom in so you can kind of see the area I'm going to work on. Kind of right in here, I think. So you can see right now there are layers, but there's not a lot of detail. I put just some dots basically to identify different windows but I think now it's important to come back and put some precision in and really start to rehone the colors of the wall so we're gonna take that brown yellow brown and yellow and white combination I'm gonna bring it into the middle here we're just gonna start another batch we're gonna bring more yellow 
because that really worked for us down here. Oh, it's too dark for, but we can look at, it's too dark for there, but actually, that might work for, I'm looking at the middle photo now, and I realize there's some value difference here, right on the edge of this wall. It kind of, and because I mixed this color and it's too dark, this might be a great color to use for the value contrast. What do y'all think? There we go. And there's Oh, sorry. Huh. I messed up. This is what I was adding to the wall. There's kind of this value contrast there on the wall. And so I was mixing that color to try to go up here and it was too dark, but I put it there along the edge of the wall. There's kind of a where the probably the water has run down and kind of stained the wall. So I'm kind of trying to create that effect there. I may have to come back and redo that. That's fine. We just keep, yeah, there's some over here too. So we'll just kind of Again, layer, layer, layer. Okay, now I'm going to stop there. Come back to where I said I was going to go. We're just going to take some white, lighten this up, take our yellow again, and our brown. Let's see, I think we're too light. Yeah, we're light there. Okay, but. Because we're too light, we can actually come in Yeah, that's our light. Okay. So, where do we have We have similar We have similar uh up here. So let's see. Here we want to start painting very straight lines. Okay, and then we have over here a right. This goes down the side. to like right there. Oh, 
All right, we're starting to, let's see, this comes. You all smell what I'm cooking? I think we are on the right track. Jack. Okay. Now. There is. Yeah, right there. There's the wall. And this is, uh, oh, here we go. Okay, now um, the wall is there, and there is greenery right along the wall. So we're going to just put that in. We'll have to come back and probably reestablish that. But, and then we'll put some greenery there. That goes up into there. Okay, good deal. The wall kind of appears out of the then up here we need to do some a little bit darker so I'm going to take some more brown little tiny blue into what we were doing before and it needs to go in I think like right here that's also
All right, all right, all right. This is very yellow, so I want to brown it down a little bit. It's drying very yellow. Well, not so much. This is this is more brown. So now I want to come in and carve out this color. And it's difficult because it is more little tiny more red, but there's not a lot of distinction between these colors. So or so I don't want to overcompensate for the red. Let's take it up there. I think it's going to be a little dark, but we can always lighten it up. Um, we need, oh, maybe not. Yeah. I think it works. Then the challenge becomes how to blend all these so that they So you have the difference in the architecture. So I'm going to have to go back again, layers, layers, layers. I'm going to have to go back in here put in lighter components to indicate little subtle variations of how the light's hitting the architectural parts of the of the building All right, but I, I like what's happening. I'm really starting to see the different layers of what's going on in the painting. What's crazy, I've done all this, but this section has no detail. This section has really no detail. 
I still need to do specific detail to the wall, but I am more pleased with the the tones of the stone we're getting and such. So um, now let me take this and see if I can do some work on the fascinating I mentioned at the beginning of the live stream um, and I don't know if everybody was on yet but if you weren't there is a really great documentary about Mont Saint, Saint, Mont Saint Michel on Amazon video and this island that it's built on there were two islands actually and the way they built this over the years and hundreds of years was that they took the building materials, they quarried basically the other island, and so it doesn't exist anymore. It's very, very tiny when the when the um, tide goes out, but they would prepare all the stone and then when the tide would come back in they had basically barges that it would that would float the heavy heavy stones over to Saint Michel. And so you had these really kind of amazing feats of engineering going on and that's how they got all this stone to build such an amazing edifice over to the place where it needed to be. So all that to say you should definitely check it out. Definitely check it out. All right. Let me shut this off a minute and just take a look. Mm -hmm. Just stepping back. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Just a few more minutes. I will probably do several more depending on how much time I have over the holidays or this week I will try to do several more sittings on this painting 
because I just think, well, number one, it needs it. And then number two, I want to do it. So. The last little bit I'm doing here is to create some um, distinctions and shadows that will give us definition to what's going on here. on the wall. So Y'all, the key is always shadow, light and shadow, light and shadow. 
you put in a shadow, all of a sudden something becomes visible. Like structure, structure-wise. All right, all right, all right. Trying to mix real quick uh, a little bit, just fix that. We'll see if we can give a few few spots.
All right, y'all. We just blew through our time together. Let's step back and take a look. We've painted two hours and it doesn't seem like it, does it? But we moved this out here. We did the whole wall. We did this. We established these buildings, the, at least the rooftops of them. We did this detail work in the stone, like the different gradients of the stone, which I'm pretty happy with. We're getting there. It, uh, it looks like what it's supposed to look like as far as the... It's starting to look like the uh, actual monument. Um, yeah. Getting fairly happy with this. Fairly happy, fairly happy. Still a lot of work to do, but it's definitely coming along. What do you think? As I clean my brushes and turn you around, I'm going to bring you back to this camera. So um, that way you don't get sick from me moving the camera here to say once again, good night, etc., etc., etc. I'm such a goofball. I'm so weird, y'all. And it's not the first time I've been told that. So I'm all right with being. A little bit goofy makes me happy okay I'm chopping off my head I don't know why although I believe when I step back I should still be Good grief. Well, we're just going to put it back. And... Oh. Or maybe not. Let's... open the camera again on my phone see if it is ah there we go now we are back with you okay so we got quite a bit accomplished tonight on this painting I'm really happy with it and I think that in a few more, a couple more weeks, maybe. Oh, this thing's falling off. My. In a couple more weeks, or if I'm lucky this week, I will get it pretty much done. And then I got to take it and have it framed because I want to have it framed. But you can see, oh, is it going to freeze on me? I think the camera... My Wi-Fi is not working very well. Okay, well you can see how big this, and I'm sorry for the lag on the camera, you can see how big this painting actually is up next to me. But it's getting there and I think it's going to be a real signature piece on my wall someday. So we'll keep working on this. In the meantime, you can follow me on Instagram to see progress photos of everything I paint. And you can, um, yeah, connect with me on YouTube if you're not already. That's where all of these happen, unless I mess it up like I did last week. However, um, I will definitely work not to do that again. Okay, I am having problems with the camera and it is lagging. So I will let you go. I will see you next week. 
For those of you here in the States, have a very happy Thanksgiving, and we will see you next Monday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time for another Paint Party live stream. Until then, thanks so much. Have a good night.